Today, there is one NHL video game, EA's NHL 22, with NHL 23 around the corner. While NHL 22 is an improvement over recent games, it's still a far cry from where NHL games used to be. Back in the day, EA actually put a lot of resources into their NHL games and consistently delivered a competitive product. This was thanks to some heavy competition from the underrated NHL 2K games. You see, 2K's NHL series may seem like a failure on the surface, with most games in the series garnering average review scores from critics, culminating with a quiet cancellation. But to the hardcore NHL fan, to the offline franchise player, to the hockey sim heads of the world, the loss of NHL 2K was devastating. And to the casual hockey fans, while it may not be obvious, the stagnation of EA's NHL titles post-NHL 14 is a direct result of that lack of competition. By no longer existing, NHL 2K couldn't be a threat to EA, so EA quit trying. When NHL 2K11 released only on the Wii, EA also released an NHL game for the Wii. When 2K announced that there would be no NHL 2K12, EA sent half of their NHL development team to another studio to cut costs. When companies like EA are motivated only by profit, competition is the only thing that can turn out an innovative product. Looking back at these 2K NHL games, you'll notice features and details that you'd never expect in a hockey game if you're used to EA's recent titles. From the incredible presentation of later NHL 2K games, to the insanely deep franchise mode, to the more realistic gameplay, 2K's NHL games were actually pretty good. If you were an offline player, these games were clearly king. And importantly, EA's NHL games were in a much better state than they are today while 2K was in the market. EA's games were always easier to pick up and play and tuned more towards the arcade side, with a major focus on online play. Their games were more accessible and were a lot more popular. And while 2K's games had more attention to detail and simulation style gameplay, unfortunately not enough people were buying them. 2K cancelled the series not because the games were bad, but because they weren't selling enough copies despite their quality. Even if you preferred EA's NHL games, 2K being a factor made those better. 2K returning today would make the entire genre better. Let's take a look back through the history of 2K's NHL series. This is the story of the rise and fall of one of the most underrated franchises in sports gaming history. After releasing NFL 2K and NBA 2K, both to critical acclaim, Sega needed to create an NHL title for its new Dreamcast console. Expectations were incredibly high, as both of Sega's other two sports games were fantastic. After a long development cycle with help from Black Box, Sega released NHL 2K right around the All-Star break and it was a hit. At that point in time, EA's NHL games were starting to feel a bit repetitive, so Sega created a legitimate threat. While EA's game at the time was still deeper, 2K's gameplay blew EA's away. This was one of the first hockey games to utilize an analog stick for most controls. Instead of simply pressing a button to skate backwards in other hockey games, You'd control your player with the stick while the game automatically positioned him in a defensive stance. You also had much more control over aiming your shots, as you could aim the analog stick after pressing the shoot button to aim, similar to the maximum passing in 2K's NFL games. For some, this control scheme was seen as a negative for being too simplistic compared to the many button pressing combinations of previous NHL games, but for many, these controls revolutionized the genre. The game's AI was very solid, and the overall gameplay was very true to life. If you were new to the sport, it was nice to be able to turn on and off rules like offsides and icing, and be able to set your offensive style to aggressive, for example, for a faster, more fun experience. For hardcore fans, you could set the game to all pro and watch as you get crushed by CPU enforcers, the puck stolen from you, goals scored on you, and more. This was a tough game. And while casual players may have found it too challenging at the higher difficulties and stuck to EA's offering, those who were heavily invested in the sport itself appreciated 2K's more sim-like approach. The best graphics and player models ever seen in a hockey game yet at that point in time helped 2K deliver a great first hockey game. 
NHL 2K1, however, was a different story. It never released. The Dreamcast wasn't selling very well, and 2K needed to focus on its more popular NFL and NBA offerings while they pushed their next NHL game to 2002. NHL 2K2 was actually the last game ever released for the underrated Sega Dreamcast console. And it was such a good game that diehard NHL fans kept playing their now discontinued console for at least another year. Taking the engine of NHL 2K and improving it was a great obvious move. The first game was a very solid foundation, but was missing some of the little details and features found in EA's games. Sliding poke checks, shot deflections, the ability to protect the puck, and improved goalie AI were 2K's new gameplay additions. The amount of care and effort put into the game was clearly evident. NHL games are not huge sellers compared to NBA or NFL games, so the fact that 2K was actually trying this hard proved that they hired the right people. AI was improved a lot, and each player felt like a unique individual. This was a realistic, low-scoring hockey game that casual fans could learn a lot from and diehard fans would truly appreciate. 2K2 released two years after NHL 2K, and the result was arguably the greatest playing hockey game ever made up to that point. The only real downside to 2K2 was the lack of a franchise mode, an area where EA was still far ahead. For the next release, now that the Dreamcast was dead, Sega brought the game to the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. While EA was used to being the hockey king since the Sega Genesis days, now 2K was right on their heels, and to some, it was a better game already. With NHL 2K3, Sega took that next step and added a franchise mode, and while it wasn't anything crazy, it was a solid foundation, with each team having a budget, the ability to choose which players to dress or scratch or relegate, and great stat tracking. However, 2K3 wasn't perfect, presentation was pretty lacking, and the franchise mode wasn't nearly as deep as EA's. Still, 2K was solidifying its place as THE sim NHL game when it came to gameplay, while EA's was more casual. And interestingly, this was the first NHL game with online capabilities. The presentation complaints were fixed in ESPN NHL Hockey, aka NHL 2K4. For the first time, 2K released an NHL game prior to the beginning of the actual NHL season. Nearly anything you could do in a real hockey game can be done in this game. Gameplay and AI were improved further, while the main issues of 2K3 were addressed, resulting in one of the greatest NHL games ever made. Of course, EA released NHL 2004 that year, which was also one of the greatest NHL games ever made. This was a great time to be an NHL fan, as both companies were pumping out quality titles that somehow kept getting better and better. Franchise mode was drastically improved visually in 2K4, but still needed some work. Skills and minigames were new additions, offering fun challenges like those held during the NHL All-Star Weekend, as well as other minigames that aren't. ESPN presentation sealed the deal with the best commentary ever seen in a hockey game at that point in time. If you remember the crib in NFL 2K games, well, it's basically here as well, only it's called the Skybox. You can deck it out with awards, trophies, and unlockables. The game had a ton of really unique classic jerseys to unlock, and between those and some classic teams like the 94 Rangers, you had some legitimate incentives to keep playing. At this point in time, most 2K games followed a similar formula. Replicate the sport it's based off of as accurately as possible. That was 2K's thing. And while the strategy might not be the most popular one, it was incredible for those who truly appreciated the sport of hockey. In 2004, with an NHL lockout looming, some were uncertain about whether there even would be an NHL 2K5, but there was. And it was only 19.99, just like every other 2K sports game from that year. Sales skyrocketed, and NHL 2K finally became a mainstream NHL title. Franchise mode finally got the attention it needed. Now you could hire staff, manage player contracts, scout for new players, and much more. 2K5 also featured the Heritage Classic, the first time an official outdoor stadium was used in an NHL game. While EA's NHL 2005 was a decent game, NHL 2K5 was simply the greatest 3D hockey game ever made at that point in time. Harder hits, more intelligent AI, even more realistic gameplay, 
and now a very deep franchise mode, and for only $20, this was easily the NHL game to buy. There was no cheese back then either. To score, you really had to apply hockey strategies, otherwise you'd have a lot of trouble. This was one of the greatest sports video games ever made. NHL 2K6 released with an even better franchise mode, gameplay improvements, and another $20 price tag on the older gen systems. However, it wasn't better than 2K5 in my opinion, as it had an ugly menu redesign, much worse commentary, some new bugs and bad goalie controls, but overall it was still a great game. With 2K accomplishing nearly everything they needed to on the 6th generation of consoles, it was time to work on a next gen game. For the first time in a while though, 2K's newest NHL game felt a little rushed. 2K6 on the 360 was still good, don't get me wrong, but compared to NBA 2K6 on the Xbox 360, it's clear where most of 2K's budget went that year. The game didn't feel next gen enough, with HD graphics that looked pretty similar to the last gen version, some slight gameplay tweaks and features that kind of felt slapped on last minute, and a $60 price tag. Why buy the next gen version for $60 when you could play basically the same game for only $20 on the old consoles? With NHL 2K7, however, 2K found its footing on the newer consoles. This game truly looked and felt new and fresh, unlike 2K6 which felt like an HD port. A new presentation feature called Cinemotion was incredible, as it stripped away commentary in favor of dramatic orchestra music your coach hyping up the team, loud in-game sounds, player chatter, big hits, and more. If you're losing, for example, the music becomes somber. But if you're gaining momentum, the music starts to kick up and get more exciting. It feels like you're in a 30 for 30 documentary when you play with Cinemotion on, which can be turned off if it's not your thing. 2K7 also introduced a new camera angle that changed the game forever. It's a parametric view that has more of an angle than your average top-down perspective and it turns and zooms based on what's happening on the ice. This was ahead of its time and would be the blueprint for all future NHL games. Gameplay additions included a new drop pass button and a new pressure control scheme, but besides that it was pretty similar to NHL 2K6. That wasn't a bad thing as 2K6 had fantastic gameplay, and now with improved graphics, presentation, and depth, 2K7 was a great improvement overall. To many, NHL 2K8 is the best game in the series, and maybe even the greatest NHL game ever made. 2K simulation gameplay got even better and arguably hit its peak. The new Pro Stick control scheme was very similar to EA's innovative new controls from NHL 07, and it gave the player even more control over the most realistic playing hockey game. Now you could control your hockey stick with the right analog stick for full user control. When shooting you can hit R1 for a wrister or L2 with R1 for a slap shot. And man, was this control magnificent. Franchise mode was getting really, really deep at this point, with players needing to be kept happy, angry emails from your owner if your team was underperforming, and you even got to negotiate with player agents. 2K8 was simply an all time classic. For a while, Visual Concepts was getting help from another development studio, Kush Games, now known as 2K Los Angeles. Despite how incredible NHL 2K's offline depth and gameplay had become, EA's NHL series was still the sales king, and 2K just wasn't making as much money anymore. For NHL 2K9 and 2K10, Kush Games was no longer working on the game to cut costs. 2K9 was a step back to some, but still a great game. The biggest change was to gameplay. Without the help of Kush Games, the sim-like approach was changed to a more accessible approach, with 2K hoping to get some of EA's audience to buy their game instead. This resulted in simplified controls and much faster but less realistic gameplay. While it's fun, and still more sim-focused than EA's NHL 09 was, for hardcore fans of the series it was disappointing to see such a random change in philosophy. The AI took a step back, and 2K's greatest selling point, its sim-style gameplay, was now watered down. It was a decision meant to help give the series new life, but instead potentially resulted in its demise. 
2K took a gamble by attempting to make a game more similar to EA's, without realizing that that might alienate some of their hardcore supporters. That said, 2K9 had great depth all around, with the best franchise mode ever seen in an NHL game up to that point. If you wanted to play a super deep NHL game, with gameplay that's a mix between simulation and arcade, 2K9 was a great game, but hardcore players would likely still prefer 2K8's gameplay. 2K10 was similar to 2K9, but it was obvious at that point that EA had won. While many still preferred 2K's gameplay, EA's games had the brand recognition and online popularity to win the market share. 2K didn't do too much to 2K10 on the 360 and PS3, and instead focused on improving the Wii version. Since EA didn't have a Wii port at the time, 2K figured improving their own could help close that sales gap. For 2K11, Visual Concepts doubled down further, cancelling a 360 or PS3 release, and instead making their last NHL console game a Wii exclusive. It was a strange three years for those who grew up with the series. 2K11 was a decent game on the Wii, but it had to compete with a brand new title, EA's Wii-only title NHL Slapshot, effectively killing 2K's last hope at profiting off of the NHL license. While NHL 2K did return a few years later, it was only as a mobile game, and the series that diehard fans grew to love was officially dead. EA changed paths almost instantly. They moved half of their NHL team to work on their UFC games, and improvements started to slow down. While this wasn't initially that noticeable, as EA's games were still mostly great up to NHL 14, the smaller team struggled with the next-gen version of the game. The jump to the PS4 and Xbox One would have been smoother had EA kept their team together, but now that there was no more competition in the NHL space, EA knew they'd get away with it. The game would sell regardless because it would be the only one on the market, and then NHL 15 happened. 2K simply made a more realistic, deeper game than EA near the end of its series life. Features such as customizing face masks, a visual representation of strategies, players having secondary positions, accumulated career stats, player tendencies, more varied rating attributes such as the creativity stat, roster and draft class sharing, league history and records, being able to view in-depth game stats after playing a game, a waiver wire, certain classic uniforms, and a lot more aren't even in modern EA NHL games despite fans pleading for these features for years. Yet, in a decade-old game from two console generations ago, it was all there. EA's NHL series has fallen off hard, and while 22 is an improvement, it's an improvement from 21, which is a pretty low bar to cross. Gameplay is still nowhere near as realistic or sim-likes as 2K's, even comparing it to 2K9 or 2K10. And for many who never played NHL 2K, going back and trying out these older titles might just shock you. The gameplay in NHL 2K, specifically the 6th generation versions and 2K8, are so refreshing coming from 22. Now that EA found a way to maximize profit with Hockey Ultimate Team, we probably won't be seeing drastic improvements to NHL games anytime soon, especially not at the pace we saw when competition was alive in the mid-2000s. 2K should have stuck to their roots and continued investing in their series as it was, rather than kicking out Cush games only to go in a completely different gameplay direction. Perhaps if 2K9 and 2K10 were more sim-focused, 2K would have made enough to keep the series going a little longer, and maybe EA's NHL series would be in a much better spot today. Regardless of your opinion on either series, however, it's pretty clear that competition brings out the best with sports games. I miss the days of passionate, innovative NHL games made by people who truly loved and cared about the sport and its history. Instead, we have a terrible base game getting small tweaks and roster updates every year. It's unclear if 2K, or another company, will ever make an NHL game again, but it's very clear that we desperately need it to happen. Thanks for watching.